Hello my friends, this is Felipe Coelho. Welcome again to the channel. Today I want to talk about something very interesting. It is the use of the thumb. How many good things, how many useful things you can do with it. And how it can actually technically be very, very effective and uh, do things with more ease that the fingers actually have a harder time with. I'm gonna teach you four phrases in this video and I'm gonna talk about the basic concept of using the thumb. Basically, before I show you these four phrases, let's talk about the ideal technique of using the thumb. Basically, the way that I see it, uh, I like to uh, do the same exact technique as the gypsy players do when playing gypsy jazz, and um, I've heard it being called pig slanting, and that consists of two rules, okay? So these two rules are, first, every time you play on a, on a new string, as we are always changing strings, you must always start on a downstroke even if you're going upwards of the string. That may be a little complicated, but it's worth doing because you get more punch out of the guitar, you get more, uh, better tone and volume projection. Um, also, the second rule is always lean downwards after playing a note. So if I play a note, I'm finished leaning downwards right there. Another note, I finish leaning downwards. So whatever I play, I finish that note and I'm leaning on the next. These rules are important rules that you want to keep in mind as we develop together, as we look into the thumb technique. Now, why should we play with the thumb? Not only because of tone, a, a better tone, a more interesting, a fatter sound and volume projection, but technically uh, some of the things are, are going to be better. For example, if you have a single line, a single string line, as something like this, uh, let's say we're in a D major, and you're gonna do this between the third and the fifth, you're gonna approach, approach them chromatically. Here I'm playing with the piccato technique, all right? But if I was to play this with a thumb, I just believe that there's less struggle, less physical struggle. It's more easy on, on your body uh, for that to be done. I think it takes less practice to do, to do this than this. That takes more practice, I believe. Now, sound-wise, also, there's an important point here. I'm gonna get to the four phrases in just a second. Let me just make these important points. Sound-wise, when you play picado, because the string touches the skin of the finger just before the nail, uh, you can even look at a wave file. If you see it visually, you see that on, on the picado exercise, the string is always uh, made silent before the note actually comes out. You have a, a millisecond of silence, of muting the string before the, the sound comes out, like this. Because your finger touches the string first. Now, with the thumb, it seems like the, long, the notes will last longer. One note will keep lasting until the other one is heard. The attack does not interrupt the note as much because you don't really use as much of your skin. Since the nail is longer, maybe that's the, the reason why, but I feel like these notes are more connected than these. Listen. Right, so that's another advantage. And then, of course, when you're gonna play an arpeggio, uh, I find it much easier to do this than, than to follow with my fingers. Just go all the way, okay? Now, one of the difficulties that these rules of the pick slanting are going to create for the sake of punch and sound and volume is a very complex physically situation when you're going downwards in an arpeggio, especially when it's one note per string. You're gonna have this, say a G major, going downwards, but this will develop a great muscle memory for your right hand here. It seems to, for me, uh, doing that exercise has made me just be more agile when having to even jump strings, you know, play uh, different strings and play phrases with my thumb. Just doing this, it seems it gives your right hand a great notion of where the strings are. Now let's go ahead and look into these four phrases that I bring to you for you to play solely with your thumb. Phrase number one is a two, five, one in the key of G like this, one, two, three, four. So that's the phrase, and it starts on the minor third, down stroke, and then up stroke here, we're going to do an encapsulation of the tonic. I'll tell you that I, I do use a little cover of acrylic on the tip of my nail to make it a little harder and bring the, the sound a little more. So it starts like that. 
for this, uh, up until this point, just alternation. The last stroke on the string is up, which gives me, which helps me because then it sets me up for the next down stroke on that minor seven of A. So seven, five. And now comes the hardest part of the phrase, which is when you have an arpeggio, one upper string. You have five on an upstroke and then minor third and tonic on the downstroke. So you're gonna see me doing that double stroke. Uh, uh, you can watch, for example, a master of this technique, I would say Stockelo Rosenberg or Jimmy Rosenberg from the Gypsy Jazz Django Reinhardt School. You can even look at his right hand. Every time he has a double stroke, you can see that double movement. And one secret that I'm gonna let you in here, this is a very special secret, is that every time you have a double stroke on the thumb, it's not exactly done by the same set of muscles. One is done by leaning your arm down and the other double stroke is done by the thumb movement. So here when I have... This, this, uh, this movement here is done by my arm moving down. And then the A minor is the one I actually go grab with my finger. So look. See, it's actually not hard. So what you need to do is I maybe isolate that and practice this. See, just these two notes, both on down strings. But this one is done by, by weight. And this one is done by finger movement. Right? Continuing the line. Now here, when I get to the one, it goes... This is right the passage between the, the minor chord and the dominant chord. You hear that minor seven of the minor chord moving down to the major third of the dominant. Actually here, it's the major third is responded by the octave. And then you finally resolve to the one by approaching the minor third from below. Here's six, one. Along, along with a four, three, so you have this bluesy type of thing. So there's the phrase one, two, three, four. All right, now the next phrase is going to be a minor arpeggio that you can even think about as minor major six, like a Dorian. Here's the phrase. Basically it's one, two, minor third on C minor. And then you keep doing the pick slanting here and move down. Right there. And start again. I'm on one, two, three, five, one. So one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, one. And then I can keep going. That's an encapsulation of one. I go up to the third and then. And now I could. Here's a great way to use the thumb is two notes per string because then you always get down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So I'm doing here uh, like a Dorian scale, two notes per string. I could use the fourth here, but I decided to go like that, just to finish on the minor third. So here's the phrase. Here, the alternation on this string, right? And then here is just a piece of cake. You just gotta go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So it suits the thumb very well. The thumb can do this uh, type of phrasing with no problem at all. Another tip before I go on to the third phrase is that you can use finger one sometimes whenever you have a situation that you're playing on a string and you're gonna do just one note on the string below and go back to that string. So I would not use the thumb on that situation because then it's gonna create a, a double stroke, the necessity for a double stroke. So in a situation like this, say G major, I could go. But then I use my finger one, that's my little trick right there. So I use my, my finger one to respond that note and then you can actually play it. You can play it with ease. So let's use that now on a different phrase. Let's do a phrase on D dominant and here's the phrase. Uh, let's apply this finger one here. It goes like this. Subdivision 16th notes, taka 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 taka, or six of it's taka da taka da taka da taka da. Okay, so I'm using here from the ninth to the third, and then I pick the thirteenth with finger one, go back to the ninth, and pick the fifth, always a fourth above. 
Now from the minor seventh to the tonic, respond with the major third picked by finger A here. Sorry, I. Go back to the seventh, respond with the ninth. And then go to the fifth. Now here's the only part that I can't just go one whole step down. I have to go down to this note, which is the minor, the major third. So that's the phrase, okay? Now to finalize our phrasing here, let's do a phrase on G major seven. How about this one? So we have this major third encapsulation of tonic, and then arpeggio three, five, seven. Responded by the six and the five. Now here's the double down stroke. That's the only part you have to watch out. And then I go one, seven, six. Okay, so. Alright guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make good use of your thumb. Don't forget that it's better than a pick. You could do amazing things with it. So explore it and become a better player every day. Till next time, my brothers. Bye-bye.